Hey guys, um, this is the first of probably many videos for this semester to help you guys better understand how to do some of the more advanced med medicine, <laughs> makeup <laughs> techniques. Yeah, it's been a week. Um, and so today, uh, I'm the guinea pig and Megan Hi. is going to be doing the actual work and I'm going to narrate um, while it happens. So what we're going to do in the video today is utilizing um, crepe hair which is one way that you can add hair to your face. Um, mustaches, beards, big bushy eyebrows, um, even hair like along your hairline depending on the character. Nowadays though, you can get a lot of really nice, if you need a nice sleet um, manicured mustache, there's a lot of options. Um, but if you wanna do a beard, still one of the best ways is to use crepe hair. So we're gonna show you how to do that today. Um, crepe hair, which you'll, if you come and get your kit or we're able to send them to you, um, we're going to include some crepe hair. Um, it looks like little braids. It's made out of some crepe-like material, um, but it feels like real hair. Um, when, you, it, when you unbraid it, it looks fuzzy like this, which sometimes you want to use it like that. Um, Sometimes you might pull it out even more and get more of that kind of, um, if you want older looking hair, gray hair that's a little wiry, um, you can thin it uh, and it looks a little bit like this. Or if you want straighter hair, if you use an iron and just gently um, iron the surface, it'll get flat more like that. So that is crepe hair and Megan's going to do a mustache today on me. And as always, first thing, I'm going to wipe my face. What did you miss? Oh, oh there it is. I was like, where did it go? <laughs> yes, we were doing this in my office because this is the only place that uh, it makes sense because of mm -hmm. not having the right technology. So we. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the first thing Megan is going to use is what's called spirit gum. Um, you should be getting some, or if um, people want to buy bigger, they really are, get excited about spirit gum, or if you have some already, um, it's a naturally occurring substance, so you definitely want to test it first. Um, sometimes people who have sensitivities to latex might have sensitivities to spirit gum because it's also tree-derived in the same way that latex is. And I think we did test it on everyone at the beginning of the semester, which I don't think anyone had any reactions. Okay, so that's good. So, so. you don't have to worry about it. So, so you want to make sure that you don't overuse it. A little bit will go a long way. And you just want to cover the area that you're definitely going to put hair onto. And then normally take some and then I have it. Then what you'll do lay the first layer. Then your lovely scissors. And she's going to be layering it because it makes it look more realistic that way. Because if you think about hair, it doesn't grow in one layer. So usually you'd wait till you get all of the um, the one layer on, which she's only going to do half of my yeah. face right now, um, before you trim it. Um, and of course you want to trim it so it looks more realistic. Mm -hmm. 
Now, we'll tell you this over and over and over and over again. Anytime you use spirit gum, use the remover to take it off. Because if you don't, it will take layers of your mm -hmm. skin with it. Yes. Which is not fun. shaping oops sorry That's okay. you want it to be you want to understand what you want your mustache to look like or your any hair you apply to your face because if you want it to be fancy you'll have to trim it quite a bit to get the right shape but if it needs to be more unruly, then you're going to probably trim it differently. This is another reason why sometimes it's easier to purchase um, pre-made mustaches just because they, you have to have a lot of patience and sometimes people don't have enough time to actually do a hand on one, even if they look more realistic. Mm -hmm. But I love doing them. Yes. It's so much fun. Yes. Megan, Megan's a pro, so. Okay. 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 So, ta-da! There's my realistic looking mustache with just a little bit of crepe hair, some spirit gum, and our next step, which will be spirit gum remover. Mm -hmm. um, just another uh, suggestion in the future. If you do decide to do um, more elaborate things with crepe hair, often to make it look more realistic, you might want to layer the colors. So if, if you want something that looks gray but looks realistic, you might kind of put some of the brown mixed in with it because that starts to look more like a real, the way mm -hmm. people's real hair grows, um, whereas just straight one color mm -hmm. um, often doesn't. Now, if it's a manicured thing, again, if you want it to be all one color, that's fine. But um, in general, if you want it to look more like real hair, uh, especially men's hair, because they're less likely to color mm -hmm. it, um, you might want to do some layering of it. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, this will be a part of one of your upcoming labs. Um, we'll let you choose where, how you use it, um, but you definitely want to try it ahead of time just to make sure that you can figure out the right amount of spirit gum, figure out how to make it look like what you want it to look like, and then figure out how to use the spirit gum remover, which we're going to do next. Yes. So spirit gum remover, um, a lot of times it's best to use it with a brush instead of like a um, cotton ball or a um, q-tip swab because the cotton ball and q-tip swab will like suck it all up and then there won't be as much to lay down. Um, you're going to go 
along the edges or along all of the parts that have spirit gum. It depends on what it's holding. With hair, you can brush it right through. But we also use spirit gum for um, other types of applications. And so sometimes you just have to kind of move along the edge and keep scooting it until it falls off like Megan's doing. Yeah. You just have to be patient because you will be a sad, sad, sad soul if you try to pull applications off without using spirit gum remover. So, ta-da! No more mustache, no more yeah. spirit gum, and that is the basics of using um, artificial hair to create different features on your face. The next thing we're going to do, next video, will be dun dun da, everybody's favorite. We're getting into more of the horror um, wound type makeup. So, see you next time. Hey guys, we're back. Here's uh, video number two. Uh, we're going to start with a little bit of um, special effects makeup. Uh, today we're going to do three things, some of the base, more basic things. We're going to show you how to do a bruise. We are going to show you how to do a small laceration. And we're going to show you how to do tattoo cover-up, which can also be cover-up for other things too. If you've got injured, you know, like scabs or if you've got scars or things like this, you can also use sometimes use this or this technique for those too. So um, first, I'm again the guinea pig. Um, Megan is going to do a bruise. Yeah. Do you want to do it on my on yeah. arm or face? Yeah. I forgot to ask you. Oh, I was that. It does something. Matter. Face is probably going to be yeah. easier. Face. Ooh, so all of you will have with your kits if you've received them or picked them up. Uh, a wheel that has four colors. Yeah. It's called a bruise wheel. It's one of multi bruise wheels that Ben Nye has. Um, this one has a deep, deep purple, yep. Yep. a maroon, a yellow, yep. and red. And so these are the base colors that Megan will use yep. with a stipple sponge, which we all know what that yep. is. Um, and it's a layering technique and it's pretty effective. So. Yes. So what I normally start out with is our lovely yellow. And I'm just gonna go right here around the eye. The one thing you do want to be careful about when you're doing things uh, where you overlay stipple in particular, but anything in general, is making sure that you don't p blend too much because then you'll lose the colors and they'll all become a big, weird, muddy mm -hmm. mess. Um, you want to still see elements of all the colors, uh, the yellow, red, and then it's pur maroon purple or pur purple maroon. I think it's, yeah. I, uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> it depends on what stage of the bruise that you're doing, but um, the yellow always should be the outside, um, because if you think about when you have a bruise, the way it heals, it tends to heal from the outside in, and you get this weird yellowy green color on the outside, so you definitely want to start with your yellow, you want your yellow to be the largest yeah. part of the bruise. Go to the red. Now, honestly, the, you, you don't necessarily have to use mm -hmm. a bruise kit. If you can find some, usually creams work better, some creams that are similar in color, um, you know, you could maybe raid a family member's old makeup or you could find stuff that's inexpensive through Wet n Wild. It just depends on what's popular 
as to whether you can get it in cream or go online and order stuff. And as long as you have some four, these four colors within that ballpark, you, you can make your um, own little palette for a bruise. Going to the our lovely maroon color. When you get into the maroon and the purple, that is often kind of the center of the injury, um, where it's maybe affected the deepest. So before you do any kind of wound, you want to think about where was the point of impact because that's probably, depending on what the wound is for a bruise, it's probably going to be the darkest. For other injuries, sometimes it's the lightest. It just depends on what kind of injury you're, you are trying to create. So this is why we're asking you to do, as part of your Pinterest morgue, to find some good injuries that might help you better understand how to create lacerations and bruises and other fun types of basic special effects. If you don't have a stipple sponge or you lose yours or whatever, um, you can take regular applicators and then take um, scissors, fine pointed scissors and just cut little areas out like you're making Swiss cheese and it can create a similar effect. It's going to be bigger because you won't have as close, the, the little holes won't be as close, um, but it, it'll still come close to that. Okay, and that is it for that one. Ta-da! So you can see yeah. it up close. So this one looks like a bruise that's been around for mm -hmm. probably several days, starting to heal a little bit. Um, you also want to think about where bruises Im impact, and that's something when you look at um, images for your makeup morgue, you might consider, oh, this is a bruise here. How is this different mm -hmm. from a bruise that's not on the bone, whereas this one is on the bone, and it's probably, that's why black eyes tend mm -hmm. to get bigger because they're affecting more types of tissue and more types of the face. And um, so yeah, so there's the bruise. So next we're going to do a nice laceration. So the only thing we're gonna be adding to um, the colors that are in the bruise wheel is making, is also gonna use a little bit of white at one point. Yes. This one, I am actually starting out with the red. Now I'll show you this one, I'll get closer on each step. So you want the any kind of a laceration or cut, you want it to look very precise and so you don't want to spend too much time trying to draw the initial line because it'll start looking mm -hmm. fake. Um, the more, the more um, kind of, of a quick swipe you can start out with, the more realistic it's going to be.